Have you ever wanted to put a photo into one of your quilting projects? Today we're going to go over June Taylor's Color Fast Sew-In Fabric Sheets for your inkjet printer. Let's learn how. Welcome back everybody. I am Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts. I make t-shirt quilts, memory quilts, art quilts, traditional quilts. I do custom long arm quilting and uh, today we are making two very special memory quilts. What better way to add a specific memory day and time special photo of your loved one than to print it on fabric and to put it into your quilt. Tried several different methods to do this. You can even print pictures using um, freezer paper ironed onto the back side of your fabric and put that through the printer. However, my favorite product out there that I have tried, and I've tried several, is the June Taylor's Color Fast Sew-In Fabric Sheet. Very, very simple to use. The colors from the ink are very bright and bold. And again, it's color fast, which means I'm making this quilt for this customer to use, okay? And to do that, you have to be able to wash it every once in a while. Well, since we're gonna color fast these photos, that means she can put this through the wash. Although there's some instructions like wash with cold water, gentle cycle, but she'll be able to do that with these fabric sheets. So today we're going to walk through the process of using these sheets and stay tuned for an announcement about my bee quilt at the end of the video. Let's get started. Okay, we're at the iron and I'm way down here. Without Harlan, my video skills are a hot mess. But I'm able to bring you guys videos much faster and easier. So we're going to deal with my hot mess and deal with me way down here so that I fit in the video. As you can see, I have my photos printed onto the uh, June Taylor's Color Fast sheet. To do that, you'll need an inkjet printer. I sent the photos that were given to me through Facebook Messenger over to our... Um, combined email and Harlan was able to print these pictures off using his inkjet printer. My uh, printer on my computer is a laser jet so you want to make sure that you're using an inkjet printer to print your photos onto these sheets. The next phase that we do, you're going to want to let that dry for uh, at least 10 minutes. We printed these out overnight and so they are more than dry. As you can see there is a paper backing that we're gonna remove before we heat set this. And you're gonna wanna let your iron uh, warm up to the highest cotton setting and uh, no steam. So go ahead and turn off your steam option on your iron. Now, the paper backing is a little bit tacky. It's what holds the fabric onto the sheet. So take really good extra care when you're removing the fabric from the sheet that you're not pulling really hard and distorting your image on your photo, okay? And it comes off fairly simple. I don't know if you can see that. Just pull it off evenly and slow. See? You can kind of see that that's a little bit tacky. Now you're done with that part. Now the instructions say to uh, heat press your photo for one to two minutes with the highest setting, cotton setting on your iron. And you're not moving the iron back and forth or pressing really hard so that you're not distorting your image. 
and it helps to sort of have a firm uh, pressing surface when you're doing this versus like an ironing board with um, a really cushiony cover so that when you uh, set the iron down onto the photo it's not pushing in and changing uh, the fabric. So we're going to heat set this. Pardon my shop everybody. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm working on a project, I tend to spread things out so that I can see everything. And I have five bins of clothing that I'm working with, with these two quilts. And so my shop is already small, so it just tends, the clothing sort of tends to take over. You can sort of see how much I've started on the first one of these quilts right in the corner there. You can see I'm not even using any pressure. I'm just letting the iron rest onto the photo. So we're not stretching anything out. He's fun. Now, one thing I did uh, consider when I was printing out the photos, uh, I wanted to use as much space on the fabric sheet as I could do. So I printed two pictures that are gonna go into this quilt on one sheet. And doing so, because this is a sew-in product, I wanted to make sure that I left at least a quarter inch around my photos so that I would have my uh, quarter inch seam allowance. So keep that in mind when you're positioning your photos within whatever program you use to set up your photos onto your printer. Ooh, that's nice and hot. Okay, you guys, it's as simple as that. These are heat set. I'm going to let them cool off. We're going to move into the kitchen so we can rinse these with cool water. I'm going to show you that process and then we're going to come back out to the shop and we're going to heat set these once again and then we're ready to sew them into this quilt. All right, you guys, we're in the kitchen. If you hear screaming, that is my bird, Poppy. He loves attention. He probably wants to be in the video or he wants to be attached to me whatever I'm doing. So if you hear that, that's what that is. So we're in the kitchen and I've made a cool bath of water, it's just cold tap water. And I have uh, something to dry, pat dry the photo when I'm done. Uh, it says you could use paper towels. I'm out of paper towels, you guys. It's Wednesday, it's my grocery day, which reminds me that today I'm trying out the Walmart grocery app. I am really hoping that I love this app because it gives me back half of a work day. I'm the shopper in our family. I do the meal planning and the grocery shopping every week. And so to do that, I usually take half of my Wednesday to clip coupons, to plan our meals, and to shop the groceries. That takes so much time. And it's a huge contribution to our family. And so it is like a part-time job. And so that's what I do. And uh, if this app works, I'm gonna do a review on it because not only does it provide a local job to someone, it saves me time in my job, which time is money. And um, I get half my work day back. And I don't have to go into the store where I'm an impulse shopper, okay, and but I like to save money on our groceries, and that's one of the reasons why I do the shopping is because I use coupons, and I shop the deals, and uh, so there's no impulse buying, and so I'm excited to try that out today, but no paper towels. They're on the list. 
Uh, so we're going to use just a dry cloth. And I have our photos. Remember, we've already removed the backing and we've heat set the photos for a, between a minute and two minutes on the highest cotton setting with no steam. And now we're just going to uh, gently submerge our photo into the cold water. And you know, it doesn't tell you a specific time that you do this for. It just says to rinse your photo in cold water. So I'm just making sure that everything is soaked through and that everything is consistently wet. like so, but I'm not pulling and tugging on the photos, okay? That's really important. And just like that, we're going to pull it out of the cold water. We're going to try and get as much water off as we can get. And then we're going to lay it flat. I say on a hard surface, once again, so you're not distorting your photos. And now we can just pat that dry with a cloth. And it's that easy to color fast your photos. Now the instructions say um, that you can wash your quilt with no detergent, cold water on a gentle cycle, and to lay your project flat when you dry it. I did a family tree quilt last year and I used several photos within that quilt and I did wash and dry in the machine that quilt and uh, the pictures turned out fine. I don't think that they faded at all. However, if you're, you know, dead set against any kind of fading, I would recommend to maybe lay it flat to dry. It did work for me to put it in a dryer. And one reason I think that it might be okay to dry it in a dryer is because you're using an iron to heat set the ink. So why not use heat in the dryer? I don't know. It worked out fine for me, but if you are considerably nervous about doing that, then follow the instructions within or on the back of the package. Wow, the bird is being so good. He's not screaming or anything. Now we're just going to pat dry the back. Now, this sounds crazy. This sheet is damp now. We're going to take it to the iron and we're going to press it while it's damp. As per the instructions, to finish heat setting and color fasting these photos, and then we're ready to put them into our quilt. Okay, once again, we are at the iron, and remember, our photo sheet is still damp from the rinsing process, and you're gonna want it face up, and uh, again, repeating this again, the cotton setting, the highest cotton setting on your iron, no steam, we're looking to um, dry the pictures and to set those inks, and to do that, we don't use the steam. Again, no pressure on the photos. You're just setting the iron. to be a cooler day today. So if any of you guys ever put pictures into your quilts, I'd be interested in hearing your process, what your favorite product was. I'm always looking to try new things and um, 
love getting suggestions. So if you've ever used this product or something different, I'd love to hear about your experiences. If you uh, comment below, I would love some feedback on what you used and how it turned out in your quilt. When I move the iron, I'm really, you can't probably see it, but I'm just lifting it up really slightly so I'm not rubbing the uh, fabric itself. It is actually lifted off of the picture when I move. And you can see by doing that, I haven't uh, skewed the photos in any way. One thing you want to keep in mind also is, is a tip. Make sure your iron is clean when you do this. Because the fabric is wet and you're using the heat, it would be really easy to transfer any kind of residues on the bottom of your iron onto your photo. And after going through these steps, you know, that would be such a huge letdown. If that happened, you know, you'd probably want to start all over again. And guess what guys, just as fast as that, the photos are dry and they are color fasted. So I'm going to get busy this morning in my four hours of given time this morning. How wonderful is that? And I'm going to incorporate these into uh, the blocks that I want to add to this memory quilt that I'm working on. And uh, when I get to a point where... Uh, these photos are incorporated. I'm going to come back and show you how I did that. And um, it's a lot of fun. We'll come back here in just a minute. All right, we are back to finish up today's video. As you can see, I have put a small little frame around that uh, picture. And actually, I used the shirt that he's wearing in the photo to frame the picture. And then the mom wanted the shirt, the, the collar from the shirt with the buttons in the quilt. And so I just put that right above his picture. How special is that? I mean, it's really something that adds so much to a memory quilt. T-shirt quilt, pillows, all kinds of different quilting ideas that you could do with that. I just want to take a minute to talk about this quilt. Uh, I already love this. I, I love the person I'm making this quilt for. What a special person. Um, so far, I have used uh, jerseys. I've used one of his favorite flannel shirts and put a little jean border around that. I've used a small logo from a t-shirt quilt, um, a favorite bathing suit. This was an outfit right here that he wore when he was little that his mom made. She still has that. Isn't that awesome? We have some baseball pants. And of course, if you've ever uh, had a kid who played baseball or someone in your family, you know, you never get the baseball field off of these pants. And isn't that just special because that holds a lot of memories in there. This was a handprint of his. And I saved a little room right here in this corner because I believe the mom wants to write uh, his age when this handprint was made for this t-shirt. We have a polo and another bathing suit. This is part of his sh uh, bathing suit shorts with the Velcro pocket. So I've left it so the Velcro can open and there's a the little pocket area in there. One of his favorite flannel jackets. We have incorporated that in there. This block here is um, cargo shorts. And it's hard to see here, but I incorporated the whole pocket. So the pocket opens, and uh, when I quilt that, I'll try to quilt around it so that you can still open the pocket. And uh, also, you cannot see on the flannel jacket, but this was um, where you put your hands in the pocket in the front. I've left the pocket there, and I've left it open so you can actually put your hand in and uh, use it just the same way that he did in his coat. I'll try to remember when I quilt this to leave some of it unquilted so that you can still go into the pocket a little bit. How special are memory quilts? I mean really. Uh, 
they're, they're really priceless, if, if you ask me. Um, an announcement about the bee quilt. If you have watched some of my earlier videos, I did a video where I showed a demonstration with freezer paper and Elmer's glue on a bee quilt. And that was an original quilt design. And I mentioned in that video that I was going to offer the pattern as a free download, uh, sort of a welcoming gift to my channel. Well, I have completed that pattern. It's in a PDF file. Uh, the file is 17 pages long. However, when you print it off, you do not have to resize anything. Everything, all the pattern pieces are true to size. And so even though the pattern is long and several pages, you're ready to go once you print this off. And so if you're interested in getting a copy of that bee quilt pattern, uh, go over to my Facebook page, Lisa Cape and Quilts, and send me a message through the messenger there. And um, let me know. All you need to do is send me your email address, and I can send you that file to download. You'll need a PDF reader and then a printer, and you can print that out. I'm off to Walmart. I just got my email that says my groceries are ready, and so I'm excited to see how this goes. If this works, it's going to save me so much time. Oh, and as you know, time is money. So, I'm off to Walmart, you guys. I hope that uh, you give the June Taylor's uh, Color Fast Sew In pages a try. Again, if you have used them or you use something different and uh, you'd like to share your experiences, comment below. Uh, make sure to check out my page again at uh, Facebook at Lisa Cape and Quilts. Like and subscribe to my channel, you guys, and click the little bell. You'll get notified when I post new videos. Uh, I'd like to show more of this quilt as we go along, and uh, just thanks for watching. You guys have a good day.